running Nats Globally. This is an ops perspective on, uh, on the whole shebang. Uh, I'm Dave Kemper, um, DevOps engineer. I created the um, NGS cluster setup. Uh, Phil Pennock uh, is also one of our ops folks. He had to drop off. He's the guy who I wish were here when we set up the NGS clusters. Um, so uh, we have, uh, let's see, uh, NGS, uh, we've already kind of uh, introduced, uh, Wally gave a nice introduction of, of getting connected to the global service. Um, we, uh, as ops people, uh, we use the same components, uh, the open source components that are available to, um, to everyone else. So in many ways, we're users just like you all. Um, as ops folks, um, however, we are also a conservative breed. Uh, so instead of um, uh, running fast and breaking things, our motto is more like, hold on, wait a minute, let's, let's, let's go test this out. Um, so uh, I wanted to go over a, a bit on how we actually do the deployment of the global service. Um, it's a little bit difficult to anticipate um, from the user audience what you may or may not be interested in. So I'm presenting more of a, a, a survey of how we're using different pieces. Um, I want to make sure that uh, we have plenty of time for Q&A in case people are interested uh, in digging in on specific pieces. Um, and if nobody's interested in digging in on the specific pieces, then maybe we can get a little bit more uh, uh, onto our, our scheduled times. Um, so, geez, my, my sorry, my uh, up and down arrows are a little bit flaky. Um, NGS Compute Superclusters. Um, we've been talking superclusters a lot. Uh, we have a production and test environment. That should not uh, uh, be a surprise to anyone who's in the ops world. Um, each environment spans uh, the three major cloud providers, AWS, Azure, and GCP. Uh, we could add more, but um, that also comes with operational costs of um, making sure that they're working um, kind of the same uh, across the different pieces. Um, that's always a challenge. Um, all cloud providers are represented in each environment. Our test environment uh, simply has uh, one cluster of each. Our production environment doubles down and in one case quadruples down on different clusters in different regions across the world. Um, there are also uh, localities where clusters are relatively close together, like on, on the West Coast. Um, each cluster has its own set of API servers and operators. Uh, we have been talking a, a bit about the newer security models um, that we support um, with the, the seamless multi-tenancy. Um, but of course, for our production and test environments, they are completely separate and their vertical stacks are duplicated. Um, the, uh, uh, each of these environments has its own global connection URL uh, for production. Obviously, that's connect.ngs.global. I won't tell you what the, uh, the test one is, but of course, it's protected against the various uh, TLS and, uh, and uh, account security. Um, the, uh, as Derek mentioned, we have geo-routing that, um, that is connecting you to the nearest cluster. Uh, we use a, a third-party DNS provider, but we're responsible for providing the metadata that it uses to make these decisions. Um, and I can drill down on that if, if people are interested. So within each cluster, um, each compute cluster is a, a cloud provider managed Kubernetes cluster. Um, we decided to go back in the day with a, a managed provider because uh, with a, a, a limited uh, ops budget for uh, you know, people staying awake, having the, the, um, the uh, managed solution made sure that our control planes were um, under the, uh, the watchful eye of you know, Amazon and, uh, and Google Cloud. Um, and it was also a relatively easy thing to set up and spin up. Um, of course, this was, uh, I think at this point, a couple of years ago. Uh, and uh, they continue to make the process easier as they streamline uh, the operations pieces. 
Um, we ourselves use the NATS operator um, and it maintains uh, a custom resource definitions for uh, a NATS cluster definition. Uh, it deploys uh, server pods. So within each server pod, we have a number of containers. One of them is obviously the NATS server, but there are some other uh, support pieces, including um, the, uh, the Prometheus exporter. Um, in steady state, each NATS cluster has three NATS servers. Uh, we can scale that uh, horizontally um, uh, by uh, upping the number of uh, servers in the NATS cluster, and we can scale it vertically by um, updating our Kubernetes node pools to have beefier machines. Um, one of the uh, little tweaks that we do for NGS that um, many people don't take advantage of uh, for their, their, uh, their own clusters, uh, we use host ports to expose the NAT server pods. Um, our intent is as much as possible to keep uh, Kubernetes out of the data path. Um, now, that's some of you may be chuckling because you know already we're talking about uh, deploying a NAT server wrapped in a container on a cloud server with a Kubernetes uh, 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 a Kubernetes networking uh, overlay on top of that, um, but this um, this still lets us play in the Kubernetes world, um, but uh, cuts some of the layers out. So the ports that we're exposing on the NAT server um, get exposed on the public IP address of the uh, of the node that it's on, um, but the uh, the implication there is you can only have a single NATS pod on a node, uh, and that again is why the horizontal and vertical scaling uh, is important. Uh, we do rolling upgrades um, by uh, also a little differently. Um, we still use the NATS operator, but we deploy two NATS clusters side by side, so we've got the old cluster running. We deploy a new NATS cluster um, with uh, a pointer to the new NATS server pod that we want to deploy. And um, that side by side, the new cluster now has a, uh, a, a temporary route to the old cluster so that now they become a six node cluster. Um, they uh, do their sharing, uh, their state sharing. Um, and then we, uh, we put the old NATS cluster into lame duck mode, which basically migrates the, uh, the client connections to the new NATS cluster. Um, and so the goal there is that we strive for at most one reconnect during a rolling upgrade. Um, if you um, simply added a new server and removed one, added a new server, removed another old one, it's possible that you could have your, um, your connection migrate to another old node and then be migrated again. Now, of course, everybody is going to be writing their, um, their clients so that they do the automatic reconnection, um, but we still, as a global service, we try to go the extra mile to, um, uh, to be as little, uh, to give you as little disruption as possible. Um, also within each cluster, we have a, a custom Kubernetes observer that is syncing the IP addresses uh, of the active uh, uh, NAT servers that we have to our third-party DNS provider. And so from the, the top down, um, from the top down, uh, you've got the, the, the single connect uh, address. And then based on the, the geolocation data that we give it, it will resolve to uh, a specific cluster. And from within the cluster, we are keeping those IP addresses uh, in, uh, in sync. Um, and then uh, additionally, we have TLS certificates that are managed in cluster uh, by Let's Encrypt. Uh, so once again, we take uh, the standard Let's Encrypt with the plugin for our third party provider. Uh, we wrap that with a, a little bit of, uh, of our own, uh, our own uh, component. Uh, we run that as a cron job, so every day it wakes up and says, hey, do these certs need to be renewed? And then if it does, it goes and proves that it owns the DNS records. Um, and then it goes and uh, takes the updated uh, TLS materials and puts them in the Kubernetes secrets that the, um, the NAT servers themselves are uh, requiring to enforce TLS. Um, 
In addition, in the uh, uh, NGS compute cluster, uh, as I mentioned, there are multiple Kubernetes secrets. Some of them are TLS. There's also a secret, obviously, for the third-party DNS provider so that we can do that IP update. Uh, we've got some config maps for state and uh, interoperability of the, the various uh, working pieces that we've provided. Um, we are uh, logging export, we're exporting our logs to uh, yet another third party provider. Uh, that gives us uh, an ELK stack so we can use the Kibana dashboard to go look at events that have happened. Um, uh, our intent is basically to get the um, the, the raw logs off of the individual clusters as soon as possible into um, the global store that we can then um, write uh, Kibana dashboards and alerting off of. Um, we also uh, install Prometheus, uh, Prometheus server for in-cluster for the, the, the monitoring of the cluster itself. Uh, so that is pulling uh, the, the NATS uh, metrics data as well as uh, what is available for Kubernetes infrastructure itself. Um, I mentioned in the uh, pod that we deploy for the NAT server, we've got the um, uh, we've got the Prometheus sidecar for it as well, um, and then we can uh, pull uh, we can point Grafana uh, onto uh, those various Promethei uh, for uh, global monitoring. Um, we also have miscellaneous pods for, uh, for visibility. So for ops, we tend not to want to go directly into uh, running server pods, uh, 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 NAT server pods. So we've got a daemon set of pods for each uh, of the nodes so that we can uh, coop cuddle uh, exec onto it in case there are any issues so that we can take a look. So there are also ancillary components that we don't deploy in cluster. Um, we uh, basically uh, have uh, like Linode servers um, that handle some of this. Um, we uh, have uh, account servers backed by a PostgreSQL that's uh, managed PostgreSQL on, uh, on G Cloud. Um, that's uh, the account servers are the API servers uh, that are managing all of your, uh, your tokens and your identities. Um, we have health monitor instances that um, are globally dispersed. Those are on Linode. Uh, we also have usage server. So uh, in a couple instances, you have seen uh, usage uh, statistics. So there are servers that, that track that. Um, surveyor and link Prometheus and Grafana instances. So uh, you also saw uh, this is another instance of um, ops being conservative. So we have our original Prometheus uh, layout. Um, as Ari mentioned, um, Surveyor uses NATs to monitor NATs, and so we are also very interested in what is happening in the system as we're doing rolling deployments, and so we don't necessarily want to be dependent on the NATs that we are deploying now in order to uh, do our, our monitoring. Um, so, uh, you know, many different ways to do the, uh, the same functionality. Um, overall, um, there are certain friction points. Um, managed solutions can have rough edges. It's very convenient to spin them up um, and uh, it takes some of the management headache from you. But uh, some managed solutions give a no to public IP, others do not, and that changes over time. Uh, so for example, AWS used to not give the public IP. Now it does by default, um, but Azure does not. Um, although now that I think there's a, a, a beta feature for it. Some managed solutions support multiple node pools. Azure does not. Again, they've got a beta feature that, um, that will allow that. Divergent sets of timing around availability of supported Kubernetes versions. Kubernetes is under active development and so you will often uh, you'll get uh, notifications from the various cloud providers saying we are no longer going to be supporting Kubernetes 1.11 or 1.12. Um, so you're always chasing um, the, the versions that are being supported. If you were to deploy Kubernetes on your own and manage the whole thing, then you would be free to you know, stay on whatever version you wanted. Um, the managed solutions make cross-cluster custom network topologies difficult. Um, we are, as I said, spanning three different cloud providers. Um, managed solutions, we don't really own the VPCs and uh, the security rules. Uh, so when we want to open up ports, um, it gets to be, you know, kind of uh, an exercise in going to the console and opening them up. 
um, at the bottom line is there is no standard Kubernetes deployment. There's enough wiggle room between the different providers that on the edges, you always have to be careful. So you always have to test first to see um, what is available for your particular cloud provider. There are also many layers. When things go wrong, it's challenging to diagnose. You have a network glitch. Is it the, the, the VM? Is it uh, the, the NAT server? It's usually not the NAT server. Um, is it going to be Kubernetes? Um, is it, you know, is it going to be your, your DNS provider? Um, it's all very complicated when, uh, when there's a glitch. Um, if you leave the happy path, things can be very unhappy. Um, host ports, they're not, uh, uh, they're not idiomatic Kubernetes. Um, our use of it is kind of a, a, a wart that has uh, downstream effects. Um, and as I mentioned, have fun opening ports on three different cloud providers uh, for three different stacks. Uh, at the end of the day, you still have to end up writing a bunch of glue for management, let alone cl cross cluster automation. Um, and so now you're seeing tools, uh, tooling like Helm uh, uh, filling in that, that gap. Uh, and again, because we are a, um, a uh, conservative bunch, you know, it takes us a while to kind of change what's currently working into the, the next generation. Um, so Kubernetes is a sweet spot for HTTP services with dispatch routers in front. Um, uh, our uh, NAT servers with the TLS uh, upgrades that happen uh, uh, on your existing connection, that's not uh, the best fit for Kubernetes, which is again why we chose to do um, the, the host ports. So um, I'm already running over a little bit of time for uh, for the material that I wanted to. And as you can tell, this was just like a really uh, quick survey of uh, the components that we have uh, to deliver our services. So I did notice that there were some, uh, some questions at the time. I apologize, I didn't uh, have uh, the ability to, to look at them at the time, um, but um, uh, We'll see if I can uh, if I can get to them uh, during the next discussion. Um, other than that, um, are there any live questions, or is, does anybody want to uh, to pop in? Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. And um, for everyone listening, even if, if something like NGS doesn't feel like it might be something that you'd want to utilize. Today, uh, I think the experience that Dave and, and the team have garnered over rolling out, upgrading, and running very large-scale um, NATS clusters like this is hugely valuable. So we're, we're happy to share. Please reach out and get hold of us. Um, but uh, a lot of, of good lessons learned and uh, good practices from Dave and the team. So thanks, Dave.